I'm NFM TV's Greg Scher. Thursday, August 26, 2021, Kabul Airport, Afghanistan. An ISIS-K suicide bomber killed 13 U.S. military service men and women and 169 Afghans. 20-year-old Marine Lance Corporal David Lee Espinoza from Laredo, Texas, was among the U.S. soldiers killed. His mother Elizabeth and stepfather Victor, who helped raise their hero son since he was three years old, are with me as we honor David with our October 2021 NFM salute. Elizabeth and Victor, all of us in the NFM family of lenders are profoundly sorry for your unimaginable loss. What do you want us to know about your wonderful son? He was very quiet, but once he got to know you, he was a outgoing, um, beautiful guy. He was just wanting to do the best he could to help out. So we knew that his passion towards, you know, military was in his future. And, uh, you know, in the, even in the later years, when he was like 14 or 15, he would talk more about it when he got to high school. And uh, eventually by his junior year, he, he kind of knew what he was going to do. So he graduated from high school in 2019. When was he first deployed? He was deployed in April. April 2021. April 2021. So just a handful of months ago. And where was he sent first? He was actually sent to Jordan first. And then he was moved one week um, before the accident. He was moved on to Afghanistan. He was there for, for a week. Elizabeth, what was your level of worry when he was in Jordan and when he moved to Afghanistan to the Abbey Gates of the airport? Was it elevated? Uh, when he was in Jordan, when he was deployed, of course, I was worried. Um, like any any deployment, you know, you, as a mother, you, you worry. But um, he, he would talk to us and FaceTime over there and he would say it was very calm over there. So it kind of like my... I kind of like learned how to um, live with it because it was it was calmed over there. But once he moved to Afghanistan for that week, it was just like I, we were just counting the days because um, it was like for August 30, they were 31, they were all coming back. So we were just counting the days. What was your last conversation with him like? What was said? I love you, mom. I told him I loved him and to take care. And we were gonna, we were waiting for him to come back. The day the tragic events unfolded, Victor, on August 26th, um, you never find out right away that it's one of your own. So can you take us through that day and what that process was like from the time you heard there was an incident until the time someone knocked on your door? Uh, yes, uh, as a matter of fact, that day, my wife was working and she called me to, to the house because she, she had actually found out that something had happened. And I was here home and uh, I turned on the TV at the time and I noticed I started watching the news and they mentioned about what had just happened. And there was, I remember this general, I don't remember his name, but I remember him saying that by midnight of that day, all the parents or husbands or wives or, you know, related to the people would by then know who the, the victims were or the, the, the ones that passed away. And uh, I remember that day when I was watching him and everything, I remember when my wife came from work that evening, I remember I stayed up till midnight. And I remember walking from the sofa, going to my bed and going, we made it because it's already midnight and they didn't call us. So we're good. And uh, I remember going to bed. My wife was, of course was already in bed sleeping. And uh, then, then we get the phone call. And as soon as it rang, you know, nobody's gonna call you at 1.30 in the morning. So as soon as it rang, we knew something was up. Uh, my wife was already outside and she was crying and you know, she was hysterical, you know, she, you know she, was, she was losing it. You can never quite prepare for that knock on that door, can you? Uh, no, sir, no, sir. That was, a, that was a call and a knock we didn't wanna receive. I guess no parent wants to receive it. And that was on a Thursday. And just three days later, the dignified transfer of those 13 servicemen and women took place. What will you 
always remember about that day? Sad, seeing the 13 fallen heroes come back, but in a way it gave me some comfort knowing that he was coming home. So at the time that we're talking right now, it has not even been 30 days since that horrific day. Elizabeth, how are you getting by? I mean, what are the days like for you right now? There's days, there's good days and there's bad days. Um, I, I try to, to stay strong for my other children. Um, I don't like them to see me down or, you know, like for them, I'm staying strong. And I know my hero, my David, wouldn't want me to be sad. But there's days I can't prevent it. it it's just, I just think about it. And, and, and there's great days and good days. Just day by day. Victor, I know he was also proud of the relationship he had with you. In fact, there was one moment around his graduation from boot camp that you guys shared that I know touched you immensely. Can you share that with our audience? When they finished the graduation, we were way up in the bleachers, way on top. The next thing I know, I see him. I see him running up the bleachers after he had uh, hugged, you know, my wife, my kids, and his, you know, brothers and sisters. He actually came all the way up to where I was to give me a hug. And it meant a lot because to me, it was like, you know, here I am, I'm the dad, I'm supposed to go and congratulate him and everything. And he had it in him to come to me. And that to me showed, you know, to me, it felt like the love that, that he showed, that he cared for me, that he came up to me. I didn't go to him, he came up to me. Once he, he, he didn't ignore, like I said, he didn't ignore my wife or my, my brother and sister. They, they hugged and jumped and whatever they did. But then he, he, he was almost like, like in a jog and came up the stairs all the way where I was standing and, and gave me a big old hug. And the thing me and my wife always say, as soon as he got up there, you know, it's one of those moments where he said, Dad, are you proud of me? I said, man, couldn't be prouder. Couldn't be prouder. I, I mentioned this uh, to my wife, uh, you know, we as a family, and I've told her, I said, I am glad I met you because if not, it would have never been in my life. I'm glad to call, call him my son. Elizabeth, any final thoughts? He made me so proud. Always did. He's my American hero. He's What can I say as a mother? I was proud of him. I just, it was, he loved doing what he, he was doing what he loved. So I can't be prouder of that. He is and was a hero and he will never be forgotten. We send our love, everyone in the NFM family of lenders, and I'm sure I can say with certainty, everyone in the United States for the sacrifice that he made. Thank you. Thank May you, God sir. bless you. I'm Greg Scher. This was our October 2021 NFM Salute.